tonight, Nicola Sturge and Will, I'm sure, be toasting with Buck Fast as she today becomes the longest serving Scottish First Minister in history. Boo! She served a long seven years and 186 days, taking the title from her predecessor and mentor turned enemy Alex Salmond, who resigned following the SNP's defeat in the 2014 independence referendum. But she might not be in the role much longer if she fails to learn from the mistakes of her predecessor and continues pushing for Indy Ref 2, which she officially launched a case for in the Craven Scottish MSM this week. Then again, Sturgeon has to obsess about independence because she doesn't exactly have much else on her resume. Scotland's drug deaths have risen to record levels for seven years in a row and are currently almost five times higher than England's. The attainment gap between pupils from low and high income backgrounds has actually gotten worse, according to figures from December, despite Sturgeon naming it her number one priority in 2016. And that's before you get into the fairy scandal that's seen the SNP accused of wasting at least £250 million on a delayed and doomed project, with Sturgeon forced to deny covering up a botched contract. That wouldn't be the first cover-up allegation Sturgeon's faced, though. She kept Scotland in the dark over its first mass COVID outbreak at a Nike conference in March 2020, before milking the pandemic for all it was worth to the detriment of her people, who last year learnt they were living in Europe's COVID capital, all in a desperate bid to keep up her popularity, which fell almost 40 points once she was no longer scaremongering the public daily on the BBC. Scottish Conservatives leader Douglas Ross described Sturgeon as, quote, appalling across virtually every policy area, adding hers is a story of failure and broken promises. Amanda Platel, is Nicola Sturgeon the worst thing to happen to Scotland? Well, you forgot to add about that overstuffed little haggis that she has doubled the <laughs> deficit in Scotland to, I believe, £36 billion, wow. apart from, you know, the drug abuse, all the problems that she's got in that country. And the only thing... It really annoys me when people say, you know, longer serving. You know, Margaret Thatcher served for 11 years as Prime Minister, and the only thing Nicola Sturgeon has in common with Margaret Thatcher is that her hairstyle never changed, but Margaret Thatcher's was never a wig. Oh. Oh, Claws out. That's not catty. What's wrong with wearing a wig? And you were here slagging <laughs> off Angela's hair extensions the other week. What have you got with female politicians' hair? But, but sorry, I mean, not that I care, but are you saying Nicola Sturgeon wears pictures. a wig? How does your hair stay exactly the same except for yours, Dan? Which is clearly not a wig. I can vouch to everyone. Mm. <laughs> Adam Brooks, she's blocked you on Twitter. Yeah, she did block me on Twitter. Why? Because um, I... I I sent her the evidence against vaccine passports and I got a block. Oh, she doesn't day. like evidence. She doesn't uh, like evidence. A- Ashley no. James, you like Nicola Sturgeon, though. Why? No, I don't like her. I, I, I think she's very, very mixed. I also think we have to respect the fact she's been democratically elected several times. She has done some amazing things, like doubled the allowance of free childcare, lots of family-friendly achievements, like the baby box and expansion of free school meals. However... Is she the worst thing to come out of Scotland? I feel like we could potentially argue (laughs) Ian Brady or Dennis Nelson might be worse. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, even I would agree with that. She's divisive, she's hypocritical, she's fouled the Scottish people and she's set uh, relations back, English-Scottish relations, decades. Lots of of English people in Welsh and and other people in the kingdom would actually pay for them to leave. Mm. 